Well, right now is for you to learn how to do this project about recreating a piece of artwork using toolkit functions. Uh, the, so you, the first two things that you're going to need to do is open up desmos.com. You're going to go to the graphing calculator. And now I have my graphing calculator. I am then also going to Google uh, a famous piece of artwork. So I like Salvador Dali. And I'm going to just click on art. Boom, there's a whole bunch of paintings. Um, this one, The Persistence of Time, you might have seen outside my classroom door. Um, so we can click on it, and we should be able to get a decent rendering of it. So I am going to Command Shift 4 and capture that image. Maybe I should look for a better one, but that's close enough, right? So we have, we know the uh, artist, Salvador Dali. We know the, uh, the title, The Persistence of Memory, and I have captured it. So now I'm going to go back to Desmos. I am going to shrink my screen a little bit so that I can see um, this Desmos, this file on my screen back here. Oops. <coughs> Excuse me, I'm sorry. Um, where is it? I know it's on here somewhere. Oh, there it is, there it is. So there it is. I'm just going to take this, and I'm going to drag it onto my screen. And I thought it would work. There it is. OK. Um, and then, so now I have got it. It is captured. It looks like it automatically centered it at 0, 0, so that's great. I'm going to take the opacity, and that's how clear it is, and I'm going to change it to like 0 0.5. I could even go less than that if I wanted to. I could change the height and the width if I wanted to, um, but I think that we get the idea. Um, so I have imported the image. Now my goal is to <clears throat> recreate some of these curves using my toolkit functions. And I'm going to zoom in a little bit so I can just see a little bit better. And I'm going to look at this here. And that looks like a parabola, part of a parabola. And so I'm going to start by working with that. I know that it is a parabola, so it is going to be of the form x squared. I know that um, its location is about... Um, uh, negative 1.9, so x plus 1.9, um, and up approximately 2.5 units, plus 2.5, I guess 2.2 maybe, there we go. I know that it is upside down, so I'm going to put a negative 1 here. I can see that we could compress this by what looks like a factor of um, 4. So I'm going to put in a 4 here and here. And so now I've got a nice approximation of that curve. And notice, like, like, that's my approximation of the curve that matters. This doesn't matter. The rest of this doesn't matter. So what I need to now do is put in uh, the domain. And I want this function to exist only between negative 1.9 and, so negative 1.9 is less than or equal to x, is less than or equal to, and I'm going to look, uh, it looks like, negative uh, 1.7 and there we have it I've got one little piece of a line so I have I've created that little bit of a function and then I'm going to do this again but now I'm gonna look at this a little differently and go hey this kinda looks maybe a little like the uh, I could have maybe used the cube root function and done more of that graph but that is OK. So I've used one function. Now I'm going to find a different thing and, and do this again. Um, look right here. It looks like we've got a constant. 
right? And this looks like a constant at negative uh, 0.75. So I'm going to go negative 0.75. And I only care about this function uh, from negative 3.5. Is less than or not to equal to x is less than or equal to um, it looks like negative 2.5 negative 2.5 and there's my little y so remember um, when we are doing these functions that your job is to work on the functions you shouldn't be getting headaches because of syntax or the computer if you think it's that, please, please, please talk to me. But hopefully this gives you a good idea how to do it. Um, a couple other things. Make sure that you do save your function. Um, uh, make sure you save it. Um, that way, and save it often. That way you, uh, you don't lose anything. Okay, thank you. Good luck.